Well, fall has arrived here in Southwest Pennsylvania. We've got the hardwood campfire going, and today is an awesome day to make my low, down and dirty venison ribs. We're gonna pair them up with some orange chard, Brussels sprouts, some awesome baked beans, and you're not gonna wanna miss this one. We're gonna talk about one of my favorite cuts of venison that is often overlooked, and that's venison ribs. Every whitetail, every pronghorn, every mule deer you harvest, they've got some awesome ribs. Now you can see here, coming off the brisket and the breastbone, this is a nice size rack. So you can see on the back, there's some connective tissue here, and actually, since they're not, you know, they're very lean and no fat, that silver skin plate will help protect the meat as it's cooking. And you can see when you're taking the hide off the deer, when you're taking the front shoulder off, you wanna take care to leave just enough meat over the top of the uh, ribs so that you can turn these into a delicious meal. We're gonna show you how to get them done. So one of the ways that you can get venison ribs good and tender without drying them out, overcooking them, is in a boil. In a pot like this, whether it's on a stove, on your uh, turkey fryer burner, or right here over a campfire. But what we wanna do is get flavor in that boil that's gonna complement the venison and help with the tenderizing. One of the things I highly recommend is some traditional Yingling lager or any of your favorite beer. And then, you know, save a sip for chef. We're gonna get some of the barbecue flavor right off the bat with my low down and dirty barbecue rub. Now you take one of your favorite hot sauces. Mine happens to be this torch bearer. It's all natural, made here in Pennsylvania. And this stuff is hot. You add to your taste, but we're not gonna give it but a few drops to add a little bit of heat and a little bit of kick. And then we've got some amber honey we're gonna put in here to finish it off. And then we're gonna add our ribs. The rib boil is looking right. It's starting to simmer pretty good. So now it's time to add our venison ribs. We're just gonna lay them down into the boil and let time and heat do its thing. So you might not always think of Brussels sprouts as a traditional barbecue side dish, but I'm promising you right now that bitter, awesome flavor of the sprouts being charred up over the fire is gonna make it a lights out combination pairing up with these whiskey glazed hardwood fire grilled venison ribs. All we're gonna do now is split these guys right in half and you wanna leave enough of that stem on there so that they stay whole. So now that we've got our Brussels sprouts split in half, what we've got to do is give them some salt. That salt is obviously going to be flavor, but it's also, um, you add salt to something like sprouts or cabbage, it starts to wilt, it starts to break down, it starts to tenderize it. And then from here, what we're going to do is add some fresh orange juice. So it's going to start to help tenderize these guys and basically marinate them in here. But right now, we're going to let these guys sit, wilt, and start to get extra delicious. So you can't have barbecue ribs without barbecue beans. That's a staple, it's America, and that's just the way it is, whether they're wild or domestic. So we're gonna start our beans here today. I've got some pre-cooked great northern white beans, but we're gonna start it off with some applewood smoked bacon that we're gonna get into this cast iron pan down here on the fire and start it to render. And we're gonna follow that into the pan with some onions, and we're gonna make some awesome barbecue campfire beans. This smells so good over the fire, we might be pulling in every bear and raccoon for miles around to come check out what Hunt Chef's got on the fire today. Oh my, talk about beautiful bean footage, Hunt Chef Nation. Right here it is. We got some venison ribs now that have been simmering for quite a while. All that rib boil liquids reduced and super concentrated in flavor. And you can see how much that meat has shrunk up on the bone, but it's nice and tender. So we're at the point now, we're gonna get these guys out of the boil, get them on the board, get them rubbed with my low down and dirty, and back over the fire to caramelize up and char on the outside so we can bring this dish home. So now it's time to get our marinated Brussels sprouts on the fire, and we're gonna go on one at a time. We're gonna let the hardwood smoke and heat do its job with these Brussels sprouts to get them charred and delicious. Now it's time to start our whiskey glaze for these venison ribs. And, oh baby, just about that much. Now we've got a tall sided pot, so we're gonna light this on fire, burn off the alcohol, and add the rest of the ingredients. Now with the alcohol cooked off the bourbon, we're ready to finish our glaze and get these ribs basted up and get ready to eat. 
Well, I hope you all have enjoyed this campfire throwdown today with the venison ribs as much as we have because I think we about did ourselves here today, Hunt Chef Nation. These campfire beans, the orange charred Brussels sprouts, and these venison ribs all tacky with that whiskey glaze. This is a celebration of the harvest, bringing it all full circle. And you're only going to see it right here. You're watching Hunt Chef on Mountaintop Outdoors. And remember, always eat what you kill. Thanks, everybody. Now it's time to find out if the juice is worth the squeeze. So we've got these charred Brussels sprouts. Mmm, so good. It's got that citrus kick from the orange, lots of salt, and then the smoke from the hardwood and the natural bitterness. But these beans have been on my mind for about four hours now. Let's find out. That might be the best batch of beans I've ever made in my entire life. Wow. But now, that's great. But it's all good. But we got to try the ribs. You see that pull apart tender? Oh my gosh. Those are so good. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm. Wow. Perfectly tender. Perfectly charred, perfectly smoked, and that glaze, that's celebrating the harvest. That's eating what you kill. That's delicious.